Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm making my gear. 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 Hi, welcome to part 12 of the ESP32 sampler series. I am happy to announce that I have a package in front of me from the good folks over at PCB Way. I have got my parts from DigiKey and I am ready to unbox and assemble. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's just open up this box here. Everything's looking good. Yeah, look at that. It looks great. Everything looks awesome. Honestly, it was super easy ordering this stuff from PCB Way. Here's how I did my order. First, I export my Gerber files from my PCB design software and zip them into one folder. Then I just upload that zip file to PCB Way's website. After that, I pick all the specs for my board, like size, layers, thickness, and colors. PCB Way gives me an instant price quote based on what I choose, which is super handy. Next, their customer service team does a quick design check to make sure everything is good to go. Once it passes, I'm good to place my order and pay online. In addition, they give me tracking information so I can keep track of my package throughout the process. Turnaround was super fast. I was super impressed. Also, I just found out that they have a KeyCAD plugin that lets you order directly from the software, which sounds really cool. I'm definitely gonna try that next time. Big thanks to PCB Way for making this project possible. Now let's move ahead and assemble the board. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a huge code deep dive this time. You know, I really don't think it's necessary because all I did was adjust the recording threshold a little bit and I added a fade to every button release. The reason for that is because I was getting some clicks and I wanted to get rid of them. Super simple. The Medium article is in the description as always. So take a look if you want to check out the code. Now let's jump into a sound demo. Okay, so here's the setup that I have so far. I've got our sampler hooked up. We're gonna be sampling from the microphone and from the line in during this little session here. Then I've got the Korg SQ-1 uh, sending MIDI out to the MIDI in of the sampler. Then I have the audio output from the sampler going into the bit raiser, which is like a bit crushing effect. And that output goes directly into the SP404, which goes directly into our little MIDI guitar amp here. So I'm just gonna put my little handheld recorder in front of the amp and we're gonna start noodling around and see if we can find some cool effects and stuff. Okay, here we go. Bye. Uh, uh.
So, you know, it's a sampler. It works. It was a great first major project for the channel. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The MIDI in circuit is a bit glitchy. The MIDI through output seems to be unresponsive. So that's something that I might take a look at in a future live stream. But yeah, right now, you know, it's not a make or break item for me. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Will there ever be a Rev 2 in the future? I'm not really 100% sure, but here's a list of things that I would definitely do differently in a future revision if it were to happen. So definitely a volume knob for the audio output of the sampler. Uh, some VU meters for the audio input would have been wise, so I know when I'm clipping the recording. An OLED screen would have been great too, to be able to adjust parameters like recording threshold or attack and release, or even the starting point of the sample would have been really useful. Also, I noticed that the pitch isn't exactly perfect across the keypad, and it seems to vary sort of like based on what I'm sampling. So like a fine-tuned potentiometer would have been really useful too, so that I could use the samples in a more musical context. Also, another obvious thing would be using an external ADC or DAC. It would just improve the audio quality going into the sampler and coming out of the sampler. 
smaller. Also, upgrading to an ESP32 S3 would have been wise because I would then be able to do MIDI over USB. And then obviously, you know, being able to load or save samples to an SD card would be super handy too. Those are kind of the things that I would do in Rev2 if there ever is going to be a Rev2 for this thing. But anyways, as for right now, the sampler's done. Cool. So anyways, if you're into this DIY kind of stuff and want to see more projects like this, please subscribe to the channel. For those who have subscribed, I salute you. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.